Final game, and that's, yeah. that's nice. Nice of you to pick one. Thank you. And, and instead of going E, all of the above. No problemo. Seahawks, Bengals. I, yeah. I'm backing up here a little bit. I was always a guy who stuck up for Andy Dalton a little sure. more than most. I'm like, he's not terrible. Right. He's a decent quarterback. Yes. Get it right. If you want to say he's never gone to the uh, top eight to ten quarterbacks in the league, fine. Sure. But he doesn't suck. He's right. been a decent quarterback for a long time. Right. I thought from what I saw, and yeah. then looking back at the numbers, I thought he took it next level against Seattle, almost winning in a tough environment against a great defense. I know you watched the film. Uh, am I on to something there with thinking Andy looked a little better with Zach Taylor? No doubt. I mean, he played really well. There's, there's no question about that. Um, made a number of big throws, I mean, in a really tough environment. Think about it. That's not something you say about Andy Dalton very often. No, it's Made a not. number of big throws. Now, now, if I want to go negative a little bit, I'll go, damn, we threw for 418 yards and we only scored 20 points. Mm. And – you know, I just – if Patrick Mahomes threw for 418 yards, they would, they would have scored 38 points or 40 points because yeah. a few of those throws would have been howitzers for touchdowns. And that's where a great quarterback comes into play sometimes. Andy Dalton's the man between the 20s, yeah. but it's the special guys who can make a special throw or a special play in the red zone to capitalize on that. What, what, what does now, he not do down there, you think? He's just – he doesn't have a special arm, and he's not a special athlete for this day and age. He's a good arm and a good athlete, mm -hmm. but not special that way to where, oh, it's the red zone and everything has to happen a little quicker. The zone coverages and the holes are a little tighter. you got to be able to throw the 100-mile-per-hour fastball. Right. He only got 94. Right. You know what I mean? It's good. And, again, you can win with Andy Dalton, mm -hmm. but he just might not overcome everything on a weekly basis. There was a play, you know, in this game where they're down there driving, and it's 20 to 14, I believe, at the time, and they get down there and they're going to throw a screen pass, and he whiffed, yeah. and the ball fell out of his hand, and they intercepted it. So there was that. There was a missed field goal would hurt them. They had a first and goal at the four, where they ended up having to kick a field goal. You know, again, not to bag on Andy Dalton, but that doesn't happen to Russell Wilson. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. When he gets in those little opportunities, they score. Yeah. And then when Russell, you know, you know, when Aaron Rodgers gets to the four, they're yeah. going to score. Yeah. And same with Tom Brady. And so, again, I know not everybody's them, but I'm just trying to give some context. That's, and either way, fair. he played really well. How did Zach Taylor make him look better? Every Seattle beater in the history of mankind came out in this game. And, you know, maybe one day and we'll get up here on the whiteboard or something like that, and I'll draw some of these plays up. But this is one of the things I brought up to Mike last week on, on PFT. I said – you know, I, I totally thought the Seahawks would win. I thought they would win by more than 21-20, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I did tell him, I go, I'm a little scared for this aspect. Cincinnati's a little more talented than we're giving them credit for. And Zach Taylor has great familiarity with the Seattle Seahawks. Right. He got to play them twice a year the last two years with the Rams. So he knows the kind of plays that stress their rules out on their defense. What's a Seattle beater? Well, a Seattle beater, a lot of the times, for a lack of a better phrase, the second man through in the middle of the defense, right? So let's just say for all those out there, we're in a three-by-one formation. you got three receivers to the right, and you have one receiver to the left. Let's say out of those three receivers to the right, the first run runs a deep cross right down the middle of the field. Well, they play that three deep match zone. What happens is when the guys come into their area, they have to match them man to man until they get in a certain part of the area and then they pass them off to the next guy, right? So here's Bobby Wagner. Oh, gosh, Tyler Eifert's running at me in a deep cross, right? And he's now he's running. I got to take him for a little bit as he crosses. I can't just go, oh, I'm in zone and I'm just going to let him like run by me and then like we're going to let him catch the ball because I'm in zone. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the way zone works in the NFL anymore. It's mostly match zones. So when he gets there, now he's taking that guy, and it's almost like man-to-man -man for a few steps where he's not going to just let him go free access. But within that, you send another guy right behind it, mm -hmm. and now there's nobody there, right. right? Because the guy who's got that other guy at the first part of his route who's running the, the little lesser cross route, the mm -hmm. second crosser, the second man through is why I say that, he is going, oh, wait, this guy's leaving my area. I'm going to let him go and pass him to Bobby Wagner. But he doesn't realize, no, Bobby Wagner's got his own issues right now. He can't pass him off. But that's the way the defense is. So that's a Seattle beater. Um, two guys, two receivers to the left, right? Let's do another Seattle beater. Two receivers to your left, okay? The outside receiver runs like a real skinny post right along the inside edge of the corner, right? All right. The inside edge of the shoulder of the corner. It's a zone defense, let's not forget, but it's a match zone. So now here's the corner. He sees this guy running at me. Okay, I'm supposed to run with him. 
but he's starting to run to the post. At some point, you're not supposed to right. run with him. The safety's there for that. You're supposed to stay in your third, half, ha hence cover three. Well, it's hard in a match zone. So he follows the guy a little inside, and what do they do? With the slot receiver, he runs a little out route. So in his eye, he's, that corner still sees nothing coming back to his third to attack him. So he goes, let me follow this guy inside. But the slot receiver goes an out route and then runs up. Mm -hmm. And now, whoa, nobody's there. Right. And the linebacker's not who's covering him in that part of the zone. Once he goes up, he's going, oh, my corner's back there. I don't need to follow him up the sidelines. And bam. And that's when you see John Ross catch a long ball down the left sideline for a touchdown. So he had a lot of those type of things that I've seen from whether it was Peyton Manning and the Broncos, uh, Kyle Shanahan with the Falcons or the 49ers and things he's done to that Seattle defense. And, of course, things that McVay's done to them. Those are Seattle beaters. And they expose that coverage, which is all over the NFL right now. And this right. is why I'm, I keep saying to these defenses, a la Andy Reid in Jacksonville, Jacksonville runs the Seattle defense. They're from Seattle. And they, there's an inventory of plays in the NFL right now because so many people run the scheme where they go, here's our Seattle beaters. And New England's played them in the Super Bowl. And New England played the Chargers in the playoffs divisional round last year. What defense does Seattle run? I mean, the Chargers run. Seattle, Seattle yeah. defense. Gus Bradley's the coordinator. And why do they shred them apart? Because they've seen it. They have all the beaters. That's an issue with the Seattle scheme. And that's why we call them Seattle beaters. New term today. Seattle beaters. Second you, man through. I'm going to use that at home. Second man through. The old second man through. Let's see if my fifth grade flag football team can yep, incorporate but, some Seattle beaters. But it was encouraging. And all I can say with Seattle is, you know, Ezekiel Anza, not 100% yet. L.J. Collier, I don't even know if he played. Jerron Reed, when that defense and then Jadeveon Clowney gets a few games yeah, on it, watch be, out. Yeah. That front seven can change some games around. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.